What's going on guys? Jake Teasler here with the latest Mustang and automotive news. This is the 2020 Shelby GT500 eSource book. So in this video, we're going to cover all the details that we have about the 2020 GT500. So we've got the actual vehicle weight and all the details, very, very specific. This is 86 pages of information. So we're just going to go down the list and try to point out the um, the highlights and, and just review this whole document. So if you don't already know, um, the weight's been released, the horsepower's been released, but let's just go through it. We're going to cover all that in the video, so hang in there. Um, so if you don't already know, 20 inch carbon fiber exposed wheels, you're going to have a, you're going to have a performance package, um, adjustable GT4 carbon fiber track wing, uh, track pack front splitter wickers all this stuff if you don't already know it's going to have a seven speed dual clutch transmission and let's just kind of go through this stuff um, a lot of this stuff has already been you know released we've known about this for a long time I'm going to try to find some of the stuff that we don't already know but so you know if you don't already know 760 horsepower 5.2 liter supercharged v8 uh, dual clutch transmission s4 tires which is new um Let's just keep going down here. You know, none of this stuff is too new to me. And and it's a little heavy and dense, so let's just try to let's just try to highlight some of the, the big stuff. Um, you know, the other thing, and it's got a 2.65 root style supercharger. We already knew this. Dual clutch transmission. There's the rotary dial that nobody likes. Um, no manual option yet. I doubt there will be a manual option. Um, it does have 16.5 inch rotors in the front, which is enormous. Um, so 20% increase in swept air over the Shelby GT350. GT this is the largest brakes. The, the 2015 through 17, and I believe the 18 and 19 GT Mustang with a performance package has 15 inch rotors. So these are um, quite a bit bigger than the regular GT performance package. It does have Magna Ride, continuously controlled Magna Ride. Um, so it, it will have, with the carbon fiber track pack, it will have adjustable strut top mounts. So you can adjust your camber, which is pretty awesome. That helps with a little bit better turn in and front end grip. Um, a uh, track app like uh, line lock, launch control, drive mode, stuff like this. All right, so here's some of the more detailed information. 760 horsepower at 7,300 RPMs, 625 torque at 5,000. It's a cross plane crank, port fuel injection, Tremec, dual speed. So um, this is still, it's making peak torque at 5,000, you know, it's not going to be, it's still not, you know, a Hellcat makes a ton of torque down low. Um, this car makes a little bit more of its power up top. Same, you know, it's based on the Coyote, so it's it's the same thing. It's a Coyote, it's a little bit, it's, it's not a Coyote, it's a little bit larger. Um, but it has the same power delivery you know, style. It, it's, it gives you more power up top, let's say, than, than low end grunt of a larger displacement motor, which is good for the track. Um, so, so if you do buy a GT500, you're eligible to participate in the complimentary GT500 track attack program, right? So this is cool. Um, you're actually going to learn how to drive your GT500 at the limit. Now, if you've never done a track day, I highly recommend you doing these. So you actually learn how to drive your car properly. Um, and if you think you're think you know how to drive already, which I thought I did, I obviously didn't until you actually do a full track day. And when you do a full track day, you understand like how the limits of your vehicle. And when you understand the limits of your vehicle, you feel more confident when you're driving. So and and you're less likely to hurt other people or hurt yourself or wreck your car. So the, and you can actually, you actually know what you're doing a little bit. You can actually like push the car. So that, so it comes with a track attack. If you buy it, just like the Fiesta ST, I bought a Fiesta ST and it, and it came with a track, uh, track day that you can go out, um, and do that. So 
Uh, one of the advertisements is 90% of peak torque produced at approximately 3,400 to 7,000 RPMs. So it's making good torque um, from 3,400 because of the supercharger, which is good. So this is going to be like, if you're going to compare this to the GT350 engine, obviously it's the same displacement, but because of the supercharger, you're going to be getting a lot more torque. So you can't really compare the two engines. Um, aluminum pistons, forged steel I-beam connecting rods, um, oil squirters, nine and a half to one compression. Um, we kind of know all this stuff. It gives you the firing order. Um, so thousands of hours were put into development and testing the GT500 engine includes a signature badge. So that's cool that they're going to sign the, the engine and it's, you know, it says that it's hand, hand built, um, hand built on an assembly line by a dedicated team in Romeo, Michigan. Um, 3.6 inch single bore throttle body intake metal volt is integrated with the supercharger and charge air cooler oil pump with larger inlet and high pressure relief valve. Um, 550 is required and it actually has an 11.5 quart capacity oil panel, which is interesting. It's a lot of oil. Um, I'm not sure what the GT350 has, but on the Coyote, it's eight quarts. So you're getting a few extra quarts there to keep the engine cool. Um, and more of this, uh, plasma transferred wire arc cylinder to liner technology which we've seen that before, um, I believe in the previous GT500. And it just gets really, you can read all about that technology here, plasma transfer wire arc, uh, PTWA cylinder liner technology. I won't get too, I won't get too far into that, but um, it provides an eight and a half pound weight saving over your typical iron sleeved aluminum block. So it's not a sleeved aluminum block, they're using this technology to make the cylinder liner the cylinder lining you know more robust essentially and it saves a little bit of weight um, as far as the aerodynamics we know some of this stuff um, so they're saying that the hood is slight is wrapped around the supercharger as tight as it can be which is helpful for aerodynamics Belly pan is bolted to chassis for stiffer application. Um, belly pan is made of glass reinforced plastic. Grill mesh insert compound. Uh, grill mesh insert composed of powder coated stainless steel. Grill opening is twice as large as the GT350 to maximize airflow. Larger brake cooling ducts. Um, so the wing is going to produce 550 pounds of pressure at 180 miles per hour delivering more downforce than any street legal Mustang to date. Two piece splitter reduces, helps reduce lift splitter and belly pin. So a lot of this stuff at the rear an aggressive functional diffuser helps increase downforce and provide cooling to the rear diff cooler. So it does have dear cooler, uh, diff cooler it does have a gurney flap. This is this little flap on the rear wing or you could, it's a wicker bill as this, as they say, it's removable with four fasteners. Aggressive deceleration fuel shut off. Aggressive deceleration fuel shut off deactivates the fuel injectors when the vehicle is decelerating or coasting while normal engine, op engine operation is maintained, which helps promote, promote performance. So, I mean, the 2015 Mustang has that as well. Um, and even the Fiesta ST that I had, uh, it just says don't. If you read the, the owner's manual, it says don't coast the vehicle in neutral, essentially, because it doesn't get any better gas mileage. It says just leave it in the gear and let it, the car engine break. And when an engine breaks, it leans the car out, you know, or it shuts off the fuel injectors. And then so you're not wasting the fuel when you're decelerating, essentially. But it'd be interesting because I know some DCTs, they do something funny when you decelerate. So probably combined, they kind of coast, I guess. I'm not sure how that works, if it disengages the DCT or, or what what happens there. But um, that's something I've seen before in my car. So that's kind of not anything too new. Fail-safe engine cooling system. So this is kind of interesting. Um, we've seen this on the, I mean, on the Z06, when the, on the Corvette Z06, the C7 Z06. 
the supercharged C7. Um, it was known for overheating. So this is another supercharged engine, right? The failsafe engine cooling system is designed to help protect the engine from potential damage due to loss of coolant, allowing the driver to travel short distance to obtain service. Or re so it's basically saying like, if you boil the engine over um, and you lose some coolant, it will deactivate the cylinders, some of them, so you can par partially, so you can, um, the non-powered the non -powered cylinders act as air pumps to help cool the powered cylinders. So essentially, it just cuts off probably alternating uh, fire to the pistons, allowing it to cool off a little bit better so you're not getting full power, but you can still limp the car around. Now, what I'm hoping is that that is not going to be like a common issue with these cars. So I know it was on the C7 Z06, and that was kind of like the... Um, I forget what they called it, but a lot of guys would take the C7 and it would go into like limp mode, right? Because it would get too hot. So I'm hoping that's not like a common thing with these. And I'm hoping they actually put that in there just for precaution if someone does overheat it on accident. Hopefully it doesn't overheat regularly. Um, intelligent oil off monitor, twin, twin independent variable cam tap. That's nothing new for the Coyote engine. Smart charging alternator. Um, I believe... that essentially it's just saying the more current there is, the more torque is applied. Smart charging decreases alternator output during vehicle acceleration, increases output during vehicle brake and deceleration. So look, if you're driving the car spirited, it's gonna decrease the load on the alternator, which is gonna give you a little bit more power. You know, it's gonna take less load off the engine, so you get a little bit more power when you're accelerating. And then when you let off the gas or you're braking, it tightens, uh, I don't know if there's a clutch or um, what happens, but essentially what happens is that's when you're getting your alternator recharge when you're cruising, decelerating, um, just to make the to make that system more efficient. Okay, so the cooling system, engine and water radiator is upsized. Obviously, front radiator block off plate is standard. Um, all models are equipped with radiators for rear axle and transmission oil cool. So you're going to get a rear uh, rear axle cooler and a transmission oil cooler. Um, engineers have analyzed the 3D computer models to maximize airflow for cooling, which guided the design for the front fascia, splitters, hood vents, and brake discs. So this is very well engineered. You know, it's engineered for cooling. Um, you know, this is gonna be a track car, so they don't want it to overheat as you're, as you're uh, ripping around the track for like a full, full on track day. Axle cooler enhanced to disperse heat in track scenarios. System placed at the rear of the vehicle to enhance performance and minimize weight. Um, yeah, torsion rear limited slip, 373 gears. Transmission and engine oil coolers. So front grille opening is twice the size of the GT350 with 50% 50, 50 more airflow for six heat exchangers. So you got a lot of heat exchangers going on there. Airflow maximized around and across the cooler to help maintain optimum Da, 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 da. Let's see if we find anything interesting here to talk about. The exhaust system created to fit the five point da, da, da. exhaust metal funnel and runner pack help move spent gas. That, yeah, we know this. I know. Um, you know, it's just saying they're trying to reduce NVH. Uniflex coupling isolate the cold in from upstream to reduce MVH. <clears throat> five inch diameter exhaust tips add for aggressive look. Five inch is really big. Um, yeah, so it is going to have um, hangers on cold in are allowed or hollow hang, hollow hangers. So you know they've tried to engineer to keep the weight down, but we're going to talk about the weight in a little bit. Um, yeah, valves are tied to this. So it's got dual mode, you know, exhaust. We know about that. That you know, and the trimic. This is the big deal. Um, we're gonna see how this works out, but I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun, especially with all the torque from the uh, supercharger and having a dual clutch and the suspension being probably pretty, pretty amazing. It'll probably be a blast to drive, to be honest. If it drives anything like the GT350 or the GT350R, the GT500 is gonna be a riot, especially with the DCT. You know, it might not be as fun. Um, 
as a manual, but it, it, it'll be fun in a different way, you know. So paddle shift or activation just tells you how to, I don't think we care about that unless you're going to be driving one right now. You have a manual mode, obviously. Press that button. Um, and it's going to have a sport mode, which you can do through the the dials on the center console. There's no EPA ratings right now. So one set of suspension features a dual rate counter wound rear spring and matching rear control arm allowing the left and right sides to be mirror images of each other affecting the wheel motion okay cool this is just more about the brakes the cooling for the brakes aluminum brake booster saves weight there's so a lot of really detailed information. So I'm just trying to give this information out here to you guys. And I'm going to put the document below so you can read it yourself if you want to. Um, we know about the bricks. We're not going to talk about that. The adjustable strut top mounts. Cool. Continuously controlled magna ride dampening system, uh, which responds in real time a thousand times per second up to... Now, the Magna Ride is something that I'd like to have, for sure. Active Exhaust, Magna Ride, DCT, all these aero bits. It's going to be a unique car. Electric parking brake. Lame. Um, electric power-assisted steering with driver-selectable effort. We have that on the other Mustangs already. We already have line lock on the other Mustangs. It is going to have hood pins. If you don't already know, I made another video a long time ago about how these hoods bulge up. Because the front end of this car just scoops a lot of air. And it just the, the long, I don't know what it is exactly. But the Mustangs, the freaking hoods just, you get a lot of pressure under here. And it makes it bulge up. So they put hood pins in there. They're trying to get as much air in here as possible and not make this hood fly off from all that pressure underneath. And they put vents even to let some of that escape. So it's something they've been working on. And the 15 to 17 Mustangs, the hood just bulges when you start going over 100 miles an hour. Um, sheet molded compound hood. The hood was built with lights that sheet metal compound because it was sculpted look. Okay. Carbon fiber composite grill opening um, is made of, okay, so what is this? Carbon fiber composite grill opening reinforcement designed to achieve the same vehicle lateral stiffness, conventional steel structure. It's made of carbon fiber, 24% weight saving over Mustang GT and EcoBoost. Okay, 24% same, but it's only 10.6 pounds versus 8.6 pounds, so. Uh, magnesium tower brace, lumen front bumper beam. They're trying to keep the weight down, you know, carbon fiber wing. But the problem is you've got a DCT and you've got a V8 with a supercharger and you've got like Magna Ride and it, it brings the weight up, you know. Engine side dash. So this is to keep the n noise, vibration, and harshness down. Engine side dash absorber. Ceiling between the doors and the lower rockers. Rear wheel arch liner helps reduce road noise on gravel and in the rain. I mean, you know, it's going to have sticky tires. So when those sticky tires pick up rocks and it hits the inside of the fender wells, then you get a lot of road noise. So they're saying they put in wheel arch liners. I'm assuming that's from those sticky tires. That's what helps. Powertrain. Specifically tuned isolators are added to the transmission exhaust system to help increase the robustness of the entire powertrain and reduce transmitted vibrations to the chassis. So they're trying to keep this a very refined vehicle. Um, it's going to have revised spring rate. It actually gives you the spring rates, which is pretty interesting. 251, 914. That's not much different than the regular Mustang GT performance package. Um, you're going to have some more front end weight, so it's got a little bit more spring on the front um gives you the the roll bar the stabilizer bar diameters um we don't have to go into the track modes it's kind of dense stuff launch control 
we've got the rear axles, 373 Torsen, gives you the oil gear, gives you all this stuff. Rear wheel drive advantages. If you didn't know, you can read about that. Um, the Torsen diff, we don't want to talk about that. Acceleration timer, we already know um, that you can do quarter mile testing and zero to 60. Um, it will have like a G-force meter also. You have exhaust modes, quiet normal sport track, which is pretty cool. A lap timer, performance shift indicators. So you have like a shift light, I guess. Asymmetric tires. Carbon fiber wheels, which are cool. Um, Michelin Pot Sports Tour. Michelin Pot Sport 4S. Using a unique bi-compound technology, the Michelin standard, the standard Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires are track tested. Cup 2 tires, that would be like on the carbon fiber track pack, you're going to get Sport Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. Which those are going to be 305, 30, 20, and then 315, 30, 20. And if you don't know, Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires are the, the shizzle. Those things are so grippy makes you feel like your car is on rails glued to the asphalt gives you a lot of confidence um, so we're not going to get into all this but I just wanted to see I mean I haven't really looked at this really too much I just browsed through it so I'm looking for anything that pops up that we haven't already covered and just kind of going through here and showing you guys the photos So what do you guys think so far? Um, we're going to talk about the weight. It's heavy. We know it's heavy. Question is, how much does a Hellcat weigh? Because I know how much this car weighs. I know you guys don't know yet unless you've watched all these other videos. Probably have already, but... With available handy package includes a gurney flap, the swing is capable of producing up to 730. 379 pounds of rear downforce is 180. So that's the handling pack. And the carbon fiber track pack will deliver 550 pounds at 180. So it's not that much different. 379 versus 550. Um, you'd think that that thing would produce a lot more than that one, but it doesn't. It produces 20 or 30% more or something like that. HID headlights. Who cares? We expect that on an $80,000 car. Intelligent access, yeah, I know. Who cares? We get that on the regular V6 and EcoBoost. Or the EcoBoost, rather, the V6s. That's old news. That's a goner. No more V6. Sequential light emitting tri bar turn signals, yeah, we know that. This is just standard stuff on all the. The Recaros look amazing. Um, you know, I don't need snakes everywhere, but. You know, the seats look sick. Those look heavy-duty, thick. They look like they give you a good hug as you're ripping through the DCT. Um, I love the Alcantara. Love the carbon fiber dash. The steering wheel. The seats. It's going to feel... It's going to feel probably like a, a track car that you can just cruise in also. Just turn the AC on and go cruising. Um... I don't think we care about any of this stuff because you can get this this stuff in the regular GT premium. You know, this is just normal Mustang stuff. You can check this out anywhere. But the spec sheet is coming. 50-50 um, adjustable head, da 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 Heated and cooled front seats. Hopefully they fixed that from the previous cooled seats because those didn't work too well. Um, garage door opener. Technology. We have some good photos in here. I mean, that's sick for performance. That looks cool. Um, Hotspot. Eight inch color LCD screen. I'm, I believe that's the standard premium screen. All right, let's get past the junk here. 
We don't care about any of this. What we care about is the spec sheet. Hill start assist. It holds the brakes when you let off the brake. It's going to have blind bliss. It's going to have blind spot zone by using two radar. I have that on mine. It's great. I don't have, uh, I don't think I have cross traffic alert. I think that comes with like the, um, the cruise control that is radar detected. Hill start assist. I have that. Um, it's interesting that that's how the DCT works. It'll allow you to roll forward or backwards a little bit, almost like a manual. So they have to add the hill start assist, which is kind of cool. Um, we don't care about safety and security. Advanced track stability control. We know about that. You want to turn that off before you do a burnout. Um, rear view camera. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get through this so we can see the actual specs. Driver knee airbag. I'm pretty sure the 18 has that too. Front seat side airbags. Glove box door integrated knee airbag. Side curtain airbags. Lower anchors and tether anchors for children's system. Entrance. Da -da 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 -da. All right. Anti. Let's get to this. Let's get to the specs here. Okay, well, here let's go over it. Here's the packages. Carbon fiber track pack. 20 inch staggered exposed carbon fiber wheels. So this is the carbon fiber track pack. This is the this is the top level. Um, it's going to have a rear seat delete, Recaro sport bucket, leather sim treat, adjustable top mount struts, both GT4 wing, cup two tires. It's going to have a factory catch can shipped in vehicle for customers. So you have to install that yourself. Front splitter wickers shipped in vehicle. So you have to put the splitter wickers and the PCV oil catch can on yourself, which is cool. And then you've got the, so that's the carbon track pack. Carbon fiber wheels, carbon fiber instrument panel, wheel lock kit, rear seat delete, Recaro adjustable top mount struts, the wing and the race tires, catch can, splitter wickers. Handling pack is gonna have front splitter wickers, and rear gurney flap so just just a couple little things technology pack it's gonna have bliss it's gonna have bang and olsen sound system voice activated touch screen let's see so exterior colors you're gonna have that this red it's called Rapid Red Metallic Tinted Clear Coat. Twister Orange Tinted Clear Coat. What? That's it? We get two colors? No, oh, that's not right. All right, this is kind of dense stuff. I know, I'm sorry. But we're just going to keep going through here until we figure out what we want to see. Uh, performance and handling aluminum front bumper beam. We kind of know about all this stuff. We've already talked about all this stuff. Equipment groups and packages, you're gonna have carbon fiber track pack and the handling package and then the technology package. So there's just three packages. Here's the colors, grabber lime, iconic silver, Kona blue, magnetic ostra white, race red, rapid red, metallic, shadow black, twister orange, velocity blue. Just give me a black one with the track pack, the performance uh, carbon track pack. I'm um, just gonna grab a grab line. So it gives you the colors, the color codes. Dimension weight capacities. It's 107 inches uh, wheelbase, length 190. Width, track. All right, here it is, 4225 base curb weight. The weight distribution is 56.2 to 43.8. So, what does that mean? How much does a Hellcat weigh? Forty-four. It's 200 pounds lighter than a Hellcat, and I believe the red eye is even heavier. Um, Weight distribution is 57.43 on the red eye. This one's 46.2, um, Let's see if we can get the curb weight of this guy. 
I know this isn't official, but I thought that the curb weight of the Red Eye was a little bit more than the regular Hellcat. Could be wrong. Could be right. So it's 200 pounds lighter than a Hellcat and, you know, 55 horsepower more. Okay, so it's 44, 43, 797 horsepower. So the Red Eye and, you know, the GT500 has a little bit less power than the Red Eye. And it also weighs uh, 200 pounds less. So they say each 100 pounds worth 10 horsepower. So, so let's just say the Red Eye and the GT500 are going to be a good, a good race. Um, so there's the weight, 42, 42, 25. Um, yep. I, I saw that spec sheet a long time ago and I posted it probably a year ago. And a lot of you guys were saying that it wasn't going to be that heavy, but I kind of had an, I, I kind of thought it was going to be that heavy because, um, you're adding so many coolers. You're adding the supercharger, you're adding the dual clutch transmission. You're adding the electronic controlled suspension you know the magna ride and stuff so uh 760 is the horsepower at 7300 you know we've covered all this stuff composite intake um let's see if we have anything else interesting aluminum pistons forged aluminum pistons so with that technology of the um the lining of the cylinders and the forged aluminum pistons and the forged steel I-beam rods. Hopefully this motor will take tons of power. Hopefully Whipple will make an upgrade and be able to make a ton of power. And hopefully that DCT will hold up. Now if the DCT will hold a ton of power, you can add a, a big, even a bigger blower and the pistons in the bottom, it might just, you might be able to just pulley this car down do a few bolt-ons and make 800 wheel really easily, E85, and then if you wanna to go to a bigger blower and all that stuff, you can do that and make a thousand more than that. I'm sure people will be doing twin turbo kits before you know it, which would be fun with the DCT also. But, um, so there we go, we got the weight, we got the weight distribution, the horsepower, that's it ladies and gents that was a long video but i just wanted to show you kind of this brochure that was released let me know what do you think about the weight i mean look if it drives like the gt350r you're not going to be worried about the weight you know um it's not going to feel as light as the gt350r but if you're coming from like a, a just a mustang gt this thing is going to feel like a purpose-built track animal you know so um looking forward to it thanks for watching guys if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button and uh be sure to leave me a comment and uh subscribe all right have a good day